Today's lesson is on trigonometry, and we're learning from the beginning. So we're going to start with some review. We're going to remember what similarity means. We're going to remember the three rules of triangle similarity. And then we're going to really go into depth about those rules, talking about what the ratios of corresponding sides are equal, what that really means. Then we're going to move on to defining the different sides of a right angle. That'll be partially new, at least. And those are the hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent sides. Then we're going to put it all together, and that's going to give us trigonometry. And we're going to have some more definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. And then finally, an example. And then finally, how do we remember it all with a, something called Sokotoa? All right, so we're going to start with some review. And we're going to remember what similarity means. So what similarity means is that images are proportional the ratios of their sides are equal. So essentially, they're the same shape, but not have to be the same size. So if we start with that image of a cow, all of these images of the cow are all going to be similar. You can change the size, you can rotate it, you can reflect it. Those are all similar. But if you change the proportions, make it really thin or really tall, change the proportions, those are not similar. And it's true of pictures of cows, and it's also true of, for example, right triangles. All of these right triangles here are all similar, because the ratios of their sides are equal. But if I were to stretch those triangles out, then those are not similar to the original one. Now, what are the three rules of triangle similarity? We've talked about the fact that there are angle-angle similarity. Any two angles are congruent, and if that's the case, then the triangles are congruent. And we'd say that in this example, triangle ABC is similar to triangle ZXY because of angle-angle similarity. We have side-angle-side similarity. So for example, these two with two sides proportional with the angle in between them congruent. And then finally, we have side-side-side similarity. If the proportions of all three sides are proportional, then the triangles must be similar. So in this example, we'd say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle ZXY because of side-side-side similarity. Okay. And we're going to be talking about exclusively for this lesson the first of those, which is angle-angle similarity. Two triangles that have two angles that are the same must be similar. So now we're going to go into, into depth. What does it mean when we say the ratios of the corresponding sides are equal? So below we have two right triangles, triangle A and triangle B. And they are similar because they have two congruent angles. They both have right angles, and they both have 53 degree angles. And so what we say is the ratios of their corresponding sides are equal. So the ratios means we're going to have a ratio of two numbers, A over B, X over Y, something like that of their corresponding sides. So there's the large side of A, there's the large side of B. There's the small side of A, there's the small side of B. And so the A's large leg compared to A's small leg is going to be, there's the A large leg, there's the small leg compared to the large leg of B and the small leg of B. Those are going to be equal. And so when we say the ratios of corresponding sides are equal, we mean that if we take the large versus small of one triangle, it's going to equal the large versus small of the other if those triangles are similar. And it doesn't matter how big or small the triangles are. Really big, really small, if they're similar, it doesn't matter. The ratio of the sides will always stay the same. So now let's actually go through some definitions and talk about the different sides of a triangle, which we need to understand before we can actually get into using trigonometry. So the first one we're going to talk about is the hypotenuse, which we've actually spoken of before talking about right angles. So if I have right here a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest side of the right triangle, or the way I like to remember it is it's across from the right angle. So if you find that right angle symbol, what I always do is if I turn that right angle symbol into an arrow, that arrow points right at my hypotenuse. So again, my hypotenuse is the longest side, and it's across from the right angle. My opposite side, we're going to do opposite now. My opposite side, oh, before I do that, let's do a quick word about opposites. Opposites are as far away as possible. Okay? What is the opposite of never? If you think about it, the opposite of never is always, because always is as far away 
from never as you can possibly get. The opposite of never isn't sometimes, the opposite of never isn't usually, it's always, as far away as you can possibly get. So similarly, the opposite leg is as far away as possible from the angle. So the opposite leg is across from the selected angle. So find the selected angle. So if they tell us, for example, that we're find, trying to find the opposite of angle B, then I draw an arrow through the vertex and through the angle symbol, and that's going to point to the opposite. That's the one that is as far away from the angle as possible, so that's my opposite side. And then finally, we have adjacent. Adjacent is means that adjacent actually just means it is the one that's next to it and so the adjacent leg is the non-hypotenuse leg that makes up the selected angle. Essentially if you do the hypotenuse and the opposite the adjacent is what's left over. So if you find the opposite and the hypotenuse the adjacent is the remaining unselected side. So there's my adjacent. Okay. Now that I have these three sides and I know what they are we can now put it all together. The idea of similar triangles, the idea of ratios of corresponding sides are equal, and the idea of these three different sides of all right triangles to form trigonometry. Okay. So we're putting together again the rules of similarity, especially angle-angle, putting together that the ratios of corresponding sides are equal no matter how big or small, and put together that the sides of the of a right triangle are named in relation to an angle. And if you put all that together, you get trigonometry. And trigonometry uses three common functions of the ratios of right triangle corresponding sides. Well what does that mean? Let's get into it and it'll make a lot more sense in a second here. So here is a right triangle that we have our three sides. And the three main functions used in trigonometry are sine, which is abbreviated SIN, and sine is you take the ratio of the opposite angle over the hypotenuse. So the sine of angle B is going to be the opposite over hypotenuse. We also have cosine, which is abbreviated COS. Cosine is the adjacent, the line right next to it, over the hypotenuse. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then finally we have tangent. And tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So if you think about it, any two sides of a triangle, we have a trigonometric function for them. If you're going to use opposite and hypotenuse, you're going to use sine. Adjacent and hypotenuse, you're going to use cosine. Opposite and adjacent, you're going to use tangent. Okay. So let's do an example of actually how to use this. So there's my triangle again, and I have, let's say I have a 53 degree angle and this side is three inches long mm -hmm. and that's four inches long and this is five inches long so the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse so we'd say the sine of 53 degrees is four over five or 0.8 the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse so the cosine of 53 degrees equals three over five which is equal to 0.6 and then finally, the tangent, as we said, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So that the tangent of 53 degrees equals 4 over 3, which is about equal to 1.33. All right, now how are we going to remember all this? Well, who was Sokotoa? We're going to talk about Sokotoa. Well, to me, she sounds like a Native American princess. You know, we have Sacagawea. We have Pocahontas and Sokotoa. Unfortunately, I just made all that up. It's not true. Sokotoa is not, an Amer is not a Native American princess. In reality, Sokotoa is a mnemonic device that we use to help us remember the three common trigonometric functions. And rather than write it this way, let's write it this way. And you'll see why in a second. Sokotoa. Because Sokotoa lets us remember the three functions. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine opposite hypotenuse is so. And if we write it the way I'm writing here, it actually has the O over the H. So we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is cosine is, over, is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's the ka in, in Sokotoa. And finally, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So toa. 
put it all together, and we have Sokotoa. All right, so now we have all this. How are we actually going to use it? What are we going to do to, what? Well, now we know all this, how do we actually use this to help us? So we have two problems we're going to go through. The first is simply asking us to find the sine of C. So for sine, I know that so first I'm going to put my sides on. I've got hypotenuse, I've got my opposite, and I've got my adjacent to angle C. And now I'm finding the sine, so I'm going to use the so part of Sokotoa. And the so part is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so the sine of C is my opposite, which I can see right here. The opposite is 36. And my hypotenuse is, I can see right here, is 39. So if I reduce that by 3 over 3, I get that the sine of angle C right here is 12 thirteenths. Let's do another problem. This next problem will actually show us the power of that show us the power of trigonometry. In this problem here, we're being asked to find the value of x. So the first thing I want to do is put on my various sides. So I'm going to write Sokotoa and put on my hypotenuse, my opposite, and my adjacent. Now that I've done that, when I look, I look and I have to find x. So my hypotenuse, I have a value. The value of that side is 19. When I look at opposite, I also have a value. I have a value of x. When I look at adjacent, I have no value. It's totally blank. I don't know anything about the adjacent side. I don't know anything, so I'll put an x there. So now I look at Sokotoa, and I determine which function am I going to use that has opposite and hypotenuse. Which one of these three functions has opposite and hypotenuse? And the answer, of course, is sine. Sine has opposite and hypotenuse. Cosine has adjacent and hypotenuse. That's not what I need. And tangent has opposite and adjacent. That's not what I need. But sine has opposite and hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the sine opposite over hypotenuse. Well, when I look up the sine of 46 degrees, I know I need to do it on my calculator, look it up in a table. I know that the sine of 46 degrees is 0.72. So 0.72 equals my opposite, which is x over my hypotenuse, which is 19. So if I multiply both sides by 19, on the right it cancels. On the left, 19 times 0.72 is 13.68. So now I know that that opposite side, x, is equal to about 13.7. And that's the power of trigonometry, is that you can now find with just an angle and a side, you can find how big the other side is, which is something that until now we've never been able to do.